eight thousand dollars out of November. Let me talk about school choice very quickly and property taxes. I have plenty of attention. I've got ten minutes to speak and I have to bust out the door. I've uh, been uh, on the road twenty six to thirty four days, so uh, I'm looking forward to getting home tonight and seeing the grandkids and my wife. Very quickly, we already have school choice in Texas. If you're rich enough, you send your children to private school. If you're mobile enough, you move to suburbs. Why does Plano and McKinney and Denton and Katy and Tomball and all of our suburban areas have really good schools that are really growing? Because that's where people are moving to. They don't go to the suburbs because they want to sit in traffic for two hours to go to work. There's no such thing as white flight. It's not that Anglos who primarily moving to the suburbs don't want to live with other folks. It's school flight. They don't want their kids in poor performing schools. Unfortunately, if you're a single working mom and you're in the inner city, and over 90% of our students in the inner city are black and brown, and you depend on a bus to go to work, and you can't move to the suburbs, you obviously don't have the money to send your children to private school. You don't have a choice. You're stuck in a failing school. And of the 8,500 schools we have from kindergarten to 12th grade in Texas, the state of Texas says <laughs> 900 are failing. There's not a person in this room, not a person in this room, black, brown, or white, who for a minute would accept sending your children or your grandchildren to a school that the state of Texas and the school district says you must because that's the zip code you live in. You find something to do to get out of that situation. Well, some people want to get out of that situation, but they simply just can't. They try charter schools and we passed the charter school bill. I was very proud to be the author of the charter school bill last year that will give us 600 more. We have 150,000 kids in charters today. We have over 150,000 on the wait list. These are desperate families who want their kids, children to succeed in life. So we know that liberals who are in office do not represent their constituents willingly <laughs> in poll after poll after poll in the inner cities want to choice. I, I offered three choice bills last session along with Donna Campbell, and we only got one out of committee. We couldn't get the votes. We couldn't get the votes off the Senate floor. You know, we have that little rule called the 21 vote rule, which gives liberals a chance to block bills they don't like. Of course, we're going to work very hard to change that about and get to 19, where conservatives can decide which bills come to the floor. Um, and the school choice bill is a, it's a civil right to give students the best opportunity for an education. Plus, we know what is best in business is competition. If you don't have competition in our schools, you have a monopoly, and that's what we have in our public schools. My wife is a longtime school teacher, there may be some here. Most of our teachers do a great job. We have a lot of good schools. But we also have failing schools, and failing teachers, and failing principals. And those students should be subjected to having to be in that school. So if I'm fortunate enough in November, um, we will put our shoulder button behind us in a way that's never been done before and, and try to get school choice to everyone in Texas. You know, I see, yes, just today, an Oklahoma judge ruled that a bill that the Oklahoma conservative legislature passed that gave school choice for parents with child with disabilities. And today, that was overturned by an Oklahoma judge. Uh, it is not right. Uh, the other issues we talked about, I've been on the board of being an angel for children with severe disabilities. I've helped raise, according to them, 16 million for that charity. That's what my heart is. I know these families. I know these children. Some of our public schools do a great job of helping children with disabilities. Other schools just aren't prepared. And the thought that a parent who already has very difficult every day with their child, and that child has extra challenges every day, the thought that a judge said, or liberals say, even that family doesn't have a right to send my child to the best school for that child. It's just wrong. And we need to lead in Texas and win on this issue. And I intend to do everything I can to make sure we win on that issue. The second issue, yesterday, a judge in Texas ruled, interestingly, a Travis County, another Travis County judge, that's the one just ruled the other day. Um, a Travis County judge rules that our spending for education is not constitutional. One judge, one liberal judge, in one liberal county, gosh, nine weeks before an election, how did that happen before? It's interesting. Well, here's the truth. Last year, we spent 53 
billion dollars in Texas on education. That's state money and your local property tax. We need to be sure every child has an opportunity to have an equal education and a good education. But the judge didn't seem to think about school choice. He didn't seem to think about the chart. All he could talk about was money, 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 and that's what the liberals always talk about. If there are areas strategically where we need money, then we need to spend those dollars to do what we need to do. But I can assure you that the education system in Texas is not starving for cash. It was $38 billion in 1997. It's $53 billion today. That's an increase of $15 billion. Now, we've had growth, but that's above the growth rate. <coughs> Secondly, the reason we cannot spend unlimited dollars, and by the way, education is now about 40% of our state budget, about 40% of every dollar we spend. Medicaid is about 35%, public safety is 10%. So those three items alone total up almost 90% of our budget. But when you look at where does schools get their money, half the money comes from property taxes. People cannot afford for their property taxes to go up 7, 8, and 9% a year tied to their appraisal value. If your property taxes go up 8% a year in nine years, 8% a year, in nine years your property taxes double. So if you live in 150, let's ease your math for me, a $200,000 home, which is the average price in Texas dollar home, $200,000. If you live in a $200,000 home today, your taxes are about $6,000. If the value goes up 8% a year, your taxes go up 8% a year, guess what? In nine years, in nine years you'll have a $400,000 home and a $12,000 tax bill. You can't afford for your taxes to go up 8 and 9% a year if your salary is going up 2, 3, or 4% a year, and sometimes not. So we have got to break the stranglehold of property taxes on people who can't afford their home. And even if you retire and pay off your home, you can't afford to live in it. We should be in a state where you paid off your home, you're retired, and you have to rent it from the state of Texas at a price you can't afford. <laughs> If I'm lieutenant governor, there will not be a budget that passes the Senate without serious property tax relief, short-term, mid-term, and long-term for every citizen in Texas. And let me tell you what, once again, that impacts people everywhere of every color in our state. So, those two issues are really linked together. The judge says we don't spend enough money on education, but he doesn't talk about accountability, he doesn't talk about the dropout rate, he doesn't talk about poor performance. He doesn't talk about other options like charters of choice. And that's tied to the property tax break. So it's all tied together. And for the next nine weeks, because there's something happening in early November in nine weeks, for the next nine weeks, we're going to make sure we tell that story. Um, forgive me for having to talk and run, uh, but I don't miss my flight and the traffic's going this time of day to get to Love Field. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being leaders in your community. Thank you for being the strong service who pray for us and run for office who support us by putting out signs and knocking on doors and show up at events where we can't be. Um, I can tell you whether it's Ken Paxton or myself or Greg Abbott, any of us, um, we owe our success at the polls to all of you. And uh, my loyalty and my allegiance is to conservative values of AMT, Ronald Reagan, and each one of you. Remember, Donnie Campbell likes to say our conservative friend in the Senate, there's no other Texas to move to. We don't get a right to Texas. We don't have any other options. God bless you.